As technology advances, we as engineers become more and more reliant on electronics for our designs. The most crucial requirement for working with electronics is keeping them cool. SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation has some great tools for conjugate heat transfer problems like these, and these capabilities are only improved on with the electronics cooling module add-in for flow simulation. Today, I've been given a printed circuit board with a set of requirements, and I'm going to use electronics cooling module to help me design a cooling system. Let's take the guesswork out of flow simulation. Here you can see the PCB board that we have to cool. We're going to build the cooling system of this board from the ground up, and we'll discuss the features of the electronics cooling module along the way. I'd like to start with one of the flagship capabilities of the electronics cooling module, Joule Heating. Joule Heating allows us to apply electrical conditions to parts in our assembly, so we can accurately model the heat generated from the material's electrical resistance. We simply have to put an applicable electrical load at the end of each conductor, and the software will automatically calculate the heat generation for us. As you can see from the results, the heat generated from these conductors is not much, and it's well within the specs displayed at the beginning of the video. But on a more dense PCB, this effect would become more noticeable. Next, we'll add some more realism to the heat generation and the PCB itself. With the electronics cooling module comes the inclusion of the two-resistor component. This feature allows us to break down a solid body into a body case and junction formulation. This is far more accurate than a single homogeneous volume source and allows for more accurate post-processing, including final temperatures from CPU internals, case, and board junction. Also in the electronics cooling module is the inclusion of a more advanced PCB definition. The PCB solid material properties can now be defined with layer thickness and percent copper coverage parameters. These are common values you get from electrical suppliers. After running the study with all the boundary conditions we've discussed so far, the CPU gets much too hot for our requirements, so we'll have to take the cooling to another level. Now that we have seen how the electronics cooling module can help us simulate the PCB board and components, it's time to put the whole picture together. For the last step, we'll finish the enclosure of the PCB and add in some heat pipes. Heat pipes are a very common feature in modern electronic devices, but, due to their two-phase nature, they are very difficult to simulate with most CFD solvers. The electronics cooling module adds a special heat pipe feature so we can simulate these components effectively. Simply select the part that will be the heat pipe, then select the heat in and heat out faces of the pipe. Using the effective thermal resistance, the heat pipe feature is complete. To finish the enclosure, we'll add a volume flow boundary condition that matches our fan curve to save some solve time. We'll run it and view the results. The chip reaches a maximum temperature of about 70 degrees Celsius, well within the specs discussed at the beginning of the video. The electronics cooling module is an excellent add-on to the base flow simulation package. It adds all the features discussed in this video plus more, including extra database entries for fan curves, materials, and other simulation properties. Thank you for following me through the cooling design of this specialty PCB. Using SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation's electronics cooling module, we were able to easily tackle the complex conjugate heat transfer problems common in many electronic applications. To take the guesswork out of electronics cooling, or to get more information about SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation or its other add-on module, reach out to your local CATI representative today.